Throughout this video, we will be talking about medical device design considerations, specifically charging and discharging the battery. We'll be talking about why charge, voltage, and current accuracy is important, how over voltage can damage a battery and reduce its lifetime, and finally, showcasing how a low quiescent current can increase battery run times without increasing the cost. Charging accuracy matters. Accuracy of termination, current, and charge voltage maximizes capacity to extend runtime and minimize charge time. The way this is done is by being able to establish precise charging profiles. If you have a bad charging solution that doesn't really have too much accuracy, you always have to assume the worst case scenario. This means that you either don't charge your battery fast enough or you undercharge your battery. Here at TI, we have about a 0.5% plus minus charge voltage and plus minus 5% charge current accuracy in the typical case. This ensures that a precise charge time can be established and a good charge curve is created. If you look at the bottom left, you can see a graph of the typical charge profile. You start out with I short and I precharge which are tests to ensure that a battery is in working order. Once it gets up to that voltage, we move to the constant current phase of the charge profile and then to the constant voltage phase. If you don't have an accurate charge voltage or charge current, you can't really establish these two profiles and your performance suffers, especially when you're trying to taper down to ending your charge. So you can see on the bottom right an example where accuracy really does matter. Taking, for example, a very small battery, 41 milliamp hours, with a 40 milliamp hour fast charge current, you can have two different endpoints, either 4 milliamps or 1 milliamp. If you were to charge it to 4 milliamps, you would end earlier, but in such a small battery, one of the biggest concerns is actually getting enough charge to last the whole day to give your user enough runtime. So you'd actually want to get farther out just so you can squeeze out more performance, cut down on costs, and improve user experience. If your charger isn't accurate, you don't have the power to do that. This is using the BQ25100, which is one of our smallest chargers with one of the highest accuracies. The previous two graphs showcase the need for accurate charging in a single instance of battery charging. This graph here showcases the need for it across its entire battery lifetime. Here the battery is a 950 milliamp hour 4.2 volt lithium ion battery. Here as you can see there's different charge voltages 4.1, 4.2 all the way up to 4.35 but the battery voltage is 4.2, that's the ideal. And if you get to that ideal, you get 400 cycles with only about a 60 milliamp hour loss, which is quite good. If you are undercharging it, well, you don't get as much capacity, you're, you're wasting material. But if you overcharge it by just 3.5% more at 4.35 volts, within 150 cycles, you've already lost 50% of your capacity. This clearly shows that overcharging shortens battery life cycles and it does increase initial battery capacity as you can see there it gets up to above a thousand milliamp hours but very quickly it tapers off because you're damaging your battery unit. Our battery chargers like the BQ25150 and the BQ25120A have an accuracy of plus minus 0.5% very close to the ideal. And they also have programming charging profiles. This means that no matter the battery chemistry within lithium ion, you will be able to reach that ideal point and not damage your battery. All of this means that a TI battery charger lets you have a longer lasting, better performing battery. The final topic that we'll be covering is the idea of low battery leakage. Low battery leakage significantly improves battery life 
by reducing the amount of electricity or energy wasted when a device is on standby mode. This is determined by a metric called quiescent current, or the current consumed by the circuit when the circuit has no load. The lower the quiescent current, the, lower, the longer the battery lasts. I previously mentioned the BQ25100. It's our small solution size. You can see how small it is in the bottom left. It's almost as big as a lead of a pencil. And it has a 75 nanoamp quiescent current measured from the output pin. You can further reduce this quiescent current by something called ship mode. With devices like BQ25120, you can reach about 2 nanoamps quiescent current. But this requires the BATFET to be turned off, therefore it can be limited in its use. Here on the top right corner, you can see the difference that 0.075 microamps versus 20 microamps causes. It's about a week's worth of use of a device. Quiescent current really does matter. And let's say you had a device that needs more than the integrated buck or LDO in our devices, well we also have low quiescent current bucks or boosts in order to meet your power rail needs. Devices like the TPS62801 or TPS62743 allow for longer runtime while providing required functionality. An example of this functionality can be seen here in the bottom right corner where we have a buck connected to a always on MCU and also some sensors. Using I2C it's possible to use these sensors only when necessary and turn them off in order to reduce system load when this device is on standby. This means that there's less energy wasted when it's not needed and you can reduce the battery size reducing your cost. So when you're thinking of designing a medical device, you should definitely be thinking how important is battery runtime and how can I reduce my cost by getting a low quiescent current. In conclusion, critical technical specifications that should be considered when designing a medical device include charge accuracy, voltage accuracy, suitability to battery voltage requirements, and finally, quiescent current and leakage during standby mode. All of these will allow you to build a better and longer lasting medical device.